الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ونزلنا عليك الكتابة بيانا لكل شيء وهدى ورحمة وبشرى للمسلمين صدق الله العظيم Respected Imam Brothers and sisters here at Masjid Al-Falah in Subang Jaya in Kuala Lumpur Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Surah Al-Nahl of the Quran And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares that he sent down the book, yani the Quran, sent it down on thee, O Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, tibiyanan likulli shay, that this book might explain all things. Is it possible? That this book does not tell us what is money? Is that possible? I ask you tonight. This book has come tibiyanan likulli shay to explain all things. And in this book there is guidance. In addition to the explanation. And that explanation and that guidance have come as rahmah from Allah. And for those who accept it and follow it, bushra lahum. These are the ones who will succeed while all the others are going to be dancing while the Pied Piper plays the tune. You know the Pied Piper? Dajjal. He plays the tune and they'll dance behind him. But those who turn to this book for that which explains and that which guides, they will succeed. Bushra lahum. Two nights ago, in Masjid al Gufran, we were introduced to the scholar of all scholars, the one who was the teacher of the Prophet of that Ummah, the Jews, Musa alayhi salam. That teacher of all teachers was Khidr alayhi salam. And we found that he is the scholar of Akhir al-Zaman. Because he is the scholar to deal with Dajjal. He is in Surah Al-Kahf. And Dajjal is in Surah Al-Kahf. Dajjal sees with one eye. Khidr sees with two. And then last night, in Masjid India, we looked at the future of Islam in India, Pakistan and Bangladesh, a very important part of the world of Islam for the future. Because Wailul Lil Arab Min Sharrin Qadik Taraba. The Arabs are going to be white tied one of the weapons which will be used to wipe out the Arabs would be plague. And we have a booklet, I'm sorry I don't have it here, but it's outside. Uh, it's only about 30 pages, no excuse for not reading it. <laughs> Medina returns to center stage in Akhiru Zaman. And it's also translated into Bahasa. So no excuse. 
And in that booklet, we are reminded of what Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam said. That neither plague nor Dajjal, plague meaning epidemics, biological warfare. Neither plague nor Dajjal can enter Makkah and Medina. <laughs> The biological attack is coming and the Arabs are going to be wiped out. But if you are in Makkah and Medina, you are safe. Because neither plague nor Dajjal can enter. Indicating that there is a link between the plague and Dajjal. This is Medina returns to center stage in Akhirul Zaman. And this is, oh, I better not read the Bahasa, I make mistakes. So a link between plague and Dajjal. So a link between plague and the Zionists and Israel. So that it will facilitate Israel imposition of a political and economic dominion upon the Arabs when they are wiped out. And so India, Pakistan and Bangladesh and Afghanistan still remain a very important part of the world of Islam. And last night we conducted an analysis which we are continuing tonight. Last night was the political and tonight is the economic and the monetary. But it's all part of the same subject. Ten years ago, your brother Imran wrote the book, By Allah's Kindness and Leave, Jerusalem in the Quran. And many of you have read that book already. Some of you bought it, but you couldn't find the time to read it. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, you better read it. It's also translated into Bahasa. In that book, we went to the Quran and we went to the Ahadith to explain the world today. A strange world. It began with a transformation of Western Christianity. Not Russia, not Greece, not Poland, not Hungary, not Bulgaria. No, I'm talking about Britain and France and Germany and Spain and Italy and the United States. This Western Christian who has somebody called a Pope in Rome, the Vatican. Something strange happened in this part of the world. Oh yes. Because from this part of the world emerged emerge modern Western civilization with a power unlike anything that mankind had ever seen. But it was an essentially godless civilization. You go to church on Sunday morning and then come back home. But for the rest of the week, Dajjal is in charge. I guess Dajjal must also be in the church as well. <coughs> this essentially godless civilization used its power to oppress. And the first target they had was the Muslim world. I said to them last night when I spoke to the Pakistanis and the Bangladeshis and the Indian Muslims. It was not by accident at all that this Western Christian colonialism came over the world of Islam, colonizing us. Do you think it was by accident? The only people who believe that are politicians because they believe anything and they'll worship at any altar to get votes. It was not by accident. No. It was Dajjal. Because he has a mission. He's not just Dajjal, he is Al Masih for Dajjal. Dajjal who will claim to be the Messiah. 
That's so simple, why can't they understand it? He wants to be recognized as the Messiah. So he is the great impersonator. I mean, it's so simple. The true Messiah is Nabi Isa alayhi salam. And when Nabi Isa alayhi salam returns, Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam says he's returning as Hakim to want to rule. And his rule is not going to be subject to the authority of the Security Council of the United Nations. What nonsense. <laughs> no. His will be the supreme world and rule in the world. So India will have to submit to him. And China will have to submit to him. And Russia will have to submit to him. Everybody will have to submit to him. Only then, only then will the prophecy be fulfilled. That when he comes back, he's coming back as Al-Hakim. The one whose rule will be supreme in the world. And so Dajjal, in order to successfully impersonate the Messiah, will also have to rule the world, or seek to rule the world. I've said it so many times, some of you must be tired listening to Imran Hussein. But there are so many who don't access the internet, and so many who don't read books. So please be patient if you heard it before from me, because there are many who did not hear it before. The Jal is almost ruling the world now. In order for him to rule the world, he has to first take the Holy Land, bring the Jews back, create Israel. He's done all of that already. And make Israel the ruling state in the world, and that's about to happen. Within the next few months, I believe. I expect Israel to launch her wars. Pakistan, Iran, Syria, Egypt. And when Israel launches these wars, I expect that Israel will trap the United States to bring them down. Israel will bring the United States down so that Israel can replace the United States. So I expect, and you all know it already, that Israel will bring down the US dollar. That's what the Zionists are doing. And Israel will probably trap the United States in a military trap. And the United States is facing military defeat. And Israel will have to intervene to save the United States. If you live for another few years, you'll probably see it. And Israel takes over from the United States as a ruling state in the world. That's coming. That's coming. Because there's nothing standing in the way except a man named Putin in Russia. <laughs> And China. But the world of Islam, no. Now every government that we have in the world of Islam is rubbing and cleaning the shoes of the Zionists. And when you have a government which refuses, as Libya, then you have those fools with a capital F. Fools, and I hope they listen to me. Fools who enter into an alliance with the Zionists to bring down the Libyan regime. And in the process, according to the Quran, they have lost their Islam. And the same fools are doing it in Syria. I hope they don't succeed. Every regime in the world of Islam which refuses to submit will have to be attacked. So you have regime change. So that Israel can rule the world. This is around the corner. And when Israel rules the world, then a man is going to emerge. He's going to come from Khorasan, but in Jerusalem he's going to declare, I am the Messiah. That's just around the corner. Maybe another 20 years perhaps, I can be wrong. And he say, I am the Messiah, but he would not be the Messiah. He would be the false Messiah, the Jal. In order for him to achieve that goal of ruling the world, he had to first create modern Western civilization, godless, decadent, oppressive. 
give to modern Western civilization a modern scientific and technological revolution unlike anything that history had ever witnessed. And apply that scientific and technological revolution to the military. And so the world of Islam could not stand up. No. And then they colonized the world of Islam. And so India, Muslim India, regardless of how the Muslims want power in India, that's a different subject, is now colonized, it's now British India. And the same thing happened with the territories under Ottoman rule. The same thing happened in Africa. But they did not colonize the rest of the world merely to rule over the Indians. No, they had a bigger agenda than that. And last night we explained. When a certain amount of time had passed, they now decided it's time to decolonize, to come out and let the people rule themselves. But that was dust in their eyes. What they did was to put institutions in place so that when they decolonized, they could still rule by proxy. Now what is the Bahasa word for proxy? Help me. You speak Bahasa, don't you? Some of you speak Bahasa? Yes. Well, what's the Bahasa word for proxy? P-R-O-X-Y, proxy. P-R-O, not pro, oh, you in Bahasa, pro, oh, P-R-O-K. Uh, so same word. Oh, same word. Okay, you're borrowing from English now. Okay. <laughs> proxy. <laughs> same word, proxy. P-R-O-K. So you will remain in London, but you still rule over Pakistan. Huh? The leaders of the Islamic movement in India, at that time the All India Muslim League, they were men who neither knew Islam nor lived Islam. A previous generation of leaders were men who knew Islam and lived Islam. And Allah says in the Quran, هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Can they possibly be equal? Those who possess knowledge and those who don't. Knowledge being first of all, knowledge of the Quran. And so when decolonization took place, the British were leaving. What came into being in that part of the world, for Muslims, was a state called Pakistan. I never said, I never said that the Muslims should not seek liberation from Hindu rule. I never said that. Of course you have the right to seek liberation from Hindu rule. But why does it have to be at the expense of Khilafah? Why does it have to be at the expense of Darul Islam? What the leadership of the Indian Muslims did, largely because of misguidance from Dr. Muhammad Iqbal, what the leadership of the Indian Muslims did was to say goodbye to Khilafah. Goodbye to Darul Islam because they didn't have leaders who understood the subject, not even Iqbal. Because Iqbal declared it's there in black and white and I honor that man, I consider him a great scholar, I consider him my teacher and my critical comments about Iqbal are not made in a destructive way, not in a malicious way. I respect the man but that does not mean he's immune from error is there in his book and as a consequence all the others were brainwashed by it that the modern republican state with its parliament 
is an adequate substitute for the Khilafah. You can take an eraser to try to erase it from the books because you find it uncomfortable now. <laughs> but this is the truth, you can't hide it. So what the Indian Muslim leadership did was to say goodbye to the Islamic political system. But I have a message for them and for their sons and grandsons who were still faithfully loyal to that republican state that came out of Europe. A political system that came out of Europe which no longer recognized Allah as Al Malik or sovereign. The state is now sovereign. You could put a beard on the state. You could put a topi on the state. It doesn't change anything. You could put what you want in that constitution. It doesn't change anything. It is a secular state. It is a republican state. It no longer recognizes Allah's sovereignty. Stop dancing to different bogus tunes. Stop dancing to bogus tunes. This is a republican state. It no longer recognizes Allah's sovereignty. It submits to the supreme authority of the Security Council of the United Nations created and maintained by the Zionists. Where have you got your knowledge from? Defending that? Well, I have a knowledge, I have a message for you. Our Khilafah, not yours. And our Darul Islam is coming back. I don't know where yours is going, but ours is coming back. We probably have to wait only another 20, 25 years for the Khilafah to be restored. Because we have never betrayed it. We have never abandoned it. In our hearts, we have always longed for it to come back. This is ours, this is Islam. The Khilafah and Darul Islam. But you were taken for a ride by Dajjal. And that's where you are now. With your Pakistani nationalism, and your Bangladeshi nationalism, and your Iranian nationalism, and your Russian nationalism, and all of this and that and the other. And Malay nationalism. But tonight, the Jal did something else. Before decolonizing, he also corrupted not only the political system, he corrupted the market. He corrupted the money. We always used dinar and dirham as money. We used dinar and dirham as money for 1400 years. Yeah, is it dirham? How many? Five? Ten dirhams, my gosh. Ten dirhams. You need security eh, to hold this. We always use dinar and dirham. But you have been so brainwashed with your degrees from this university and that university and your pretensions to scholarship that you are now competent to guide the Muslims and take decisions for them in your foreign ministries and in your ministries of finance and in your ministries of economic development and you look down your nose on the scholars of Islam and Dajjal took you for a ride. As soon as Pakistan came into being, the Pakistani rupee came into being. That bogus and fraudulent and utterly haram piece of dirty paper. That instrument of financial enslavement. Why? Because they put it in place before they decolonized. Tonight, we ask the question, what is money in Islam? Do we have the right to ask that question? What is money in Islam? 
Hmm? When we go to the Quran, strange things happen. But politicians don't go to the Quran, do they? When last did a politician go to the Quran? Huh? They quicker fly to the IMF than to go to the Quran. <laughs> huh? When we go to the Quran, strange things happen. In Surah to Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the curious conduct of the Israelite people. Women ahlil kitab ba'da uzu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Women ahlil kitab. Women ahlil kitab. And amongst the ahlul kitab, man in ta'amanhu bikintarin yu'addihi ilayk. If you were to give him a kintar, 1200 dinars, hmm? you could buy a house in Damansara Heights with that. Yeah? When you want it back, he'll return it to you. Woman whom in Ta'man who be dinar, that was a kintar, a treasure. This is a dinar. What kind of dinar is the Quran talking about? Is it a paper dinar? Huh? Why are you hiding behind the mango tree now? Mufti? Why is the Mufti hiding behind the mango tree? Is it a paper dinar? Somebody has to speak. The time is late. Somebody has to speak. I am speaking and inshallah my students will continue to speak after me. Somebody has to speak. What kind of dinar is Allah speaking about? Women who man in ta'man who be dinar in la yu addihi ilayk. إلا ما دمت عليه قائما ذلك بأنهم قالوا إن قالوا ليس علينا في الأميين السبيل ويقولون على الله الكذب وهم يعلمون. He was speaking about a gold coin, a gold coin. Be honest. Why can't you be honest for once in your life and admit? Allah is speaking about a gold coin. That's money. If you don't know it, Mufti, then you should resign and go and plant cane or plant sugar cane or plant something. That is money in the Quran. That is money in the Quran. And one day you will stand before Allah to answer for that. That is money in the Quran. The dinar, the dinar, the dinar made of gold. That is money. That is the money that the prophets used. That is the money that the aslaf used. That's the money that we Muslims used for 1400 years. Have you no shame? Can't you recognize that is money? And then when we go to Surah to Yusuf. They put him down in the well. And then the travelers came and pulled him out. And they took him to Egypt. Plural of dirham. So there's dinar in the Quran and there's dirham in the Quran and still you are asking me what is money in Islam? Have you no shame? This is our money. But I have to now, it was not necessary but I want to go beyond that now. And let us go to the sunnah. Quran and sunnah. Am I allowed? Is this speaker allowed to go to the sunnah to determine what is money 
Huh? So we can recognize what they did when they decolonized. Are you understanding the plan now? He wants to rule the world. So he has to put political institutions in place. And he has to put economic institutions in place. And he has to put monetary institutions in place through which he can trap you, enslave you, and rule over you. The Prophet وسلم, had a companion whose name was Bilal. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Abu Sa'id al Khudri, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, said in the hadith in Sahih Bukhari, uh, you'll find it here in this book, The Golden Hour and Silver Dirham, Islam and the Future of Money. And you'll find it, oh, we have now a Bahasa translation of, we have Bahasa for this book and we have Bahasa for this book now. Yeah, this is a Bahasa. Dinar Imas Dan Dirham Perak. Islam dan Masa Dipan Wang, excuse my bahasa. <laughs> and then we have Penting Gyanwa Larangan Riba Dalam Islam. Importance of a river in Islam. Abu Sa'id al Khudri, all of these books are outside. Abu Sa'id al Khudri, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, in a hadith recorded in Sahih Bukhari, he said, that Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu came once with some dates, khura, and offered them to the Prophet wasalam. Now you don't have to put on your thinking caps for this, and this is so simple. If you can't understand this, I suggest you make an appointment with the doctor. Yes, please. Abu Sa'id al Khudri said that Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu came one day and offered some dates, korma, to the Prophet alayhi The Prophet looked at the dates and he says, Bilal, these are very high quality dates. Where did you get them? Bilal said, O Messenger of Allah, I had, let me use kilograms, can I? I had two kilograms of inferior quality dates. And I exchanged them exchange them for one kilogram of superior quality dates. The inferior quality dates were selling for maybe 10 ringgits a kilo. So two kilograms would be worth 20 ringgits and the superior quality dates were selling for 20 ringgits a kilo. So fair exchange, huh? value the same. You, you did sell it Arithmetic, didn't you? Mathematics. Good. MashaAllah. I had two kilograms of the inferior quality dates and I exchanged them for the one kilogram of the superior quality dates. Bilal said the Prophet Islam, this is the essence of riba. This is the essence of riba. What you should have done was to sell the two kilograms and get the 20 ringgits and then use the 20 ringgits to buy the one kilogram. But a direct exchange of dates for dates that was unequal was haram, was riba. There is only one way you can explain that. Stop searching for all kind of devious answers. There is only one answer why this was haram and this was riba. And in answering that question, we get the confirmation of what is in the Quran, what is money in Islam. Could someone ask the muftis to come from behind the mango tree and listen to me? Said the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this is in Sahih Muslim. This is in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet said, when an exchange involves gold for gold, 
or silver for silver or wheat for wheat or barley for barley or dates for dates as this one or salt for salt gold for gold silver for silver wheat for wheat barley for barley dates for dates salt for salt it must be equal for equal it must be hand to hand meaning it is prohibited to have a credit transaction credit transaction I don't have to translate credit for you credit transaction buy now you pay later or something it must be a cash transaction not credit hand to hand if not it would be riba you might ask yourself why is Imran Hussein targeting the Mufti tonight why answer the great wars are just a few few months away from now the world is going to change dramatically in just a few months from now the whole world of money is going to come crashing down in just a few months from now don't you think that the Muslim masses should be given guidance who is supposed to guide the Muslims at this time there's never been a time like this in all of human history never money is going to crash all paper money is going to crash who is supposed to be the guide of the Muslims at this time is it not the scholars of Islam so if my language is harsh tonight it is because this heart is weeping because those who know me would know that for 15 20 years now I've been lecturing on this subject Omar Valilio and myself but who is listening what must we do to get the scholars of Islam to wake up what more must we do hmm? gold silver wheat barley dates and salt and the question is why was it haram to have an unequal exchange of dates here it is here it is in this hadith of Sahih Muslim if an exchange is out of dates for dates it must be equal for equal and hand to hand cash transaction not credit otherwise it would be riba why there is something common in all six even a schoolboy can answer what is common to all six answer they were all used as money that is what is common gold was used as money and silver was used as money and when there was a shortage of gold and silver in the market in Medina they would use dates as money you of course may have objections to that with your secularized degree in management eh? and in finance your MBA in finance so you take your MBC, MBA in finance and go your way dates were used as money in Medina when dinar and dirham were in short supply and because dates were used as money if we allowed an unequal exchange of dates it would open the door for the money lender I am giving you one kilogram of dates and you will return to me two that's a loan on interest a hundred percent interest that is why this transaction is haram and 
exchange of dates for dates which was unequal but the fellows with their secularized degrees from the university will never understand this never 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 will understand this so let's leave them with their misunderstanding we're not going to bother with them no we don't have time for you and so we now know what is money in Islam from the Quran and from the Sunnah money in Islam is dinar and dirham that is the answer and dinar and dirham are not paper they're precious metals and it is when dinar and dirham are in short supplies that we would turn to commodities of food consumption which are in the market in abundant supply and which have a shelf life not like mangoes not like animals you can't use mangoes as money your, ma your money is rotting eh? you can't use animals as money your animal might die no so if you are in Indonesia in Java and you have a shortage of gold and silver in the market so what would you use as money don't tell me nasi <laughs> nasi is when you cook it huh? it's rice you would use rice as money in Indonesia this they're already doing that in Indonesia and if you're in Cuba you would use sugar as money but every time we use money in Islam the value of the money was always inside the money every time we use money in Islam the value of the money was always inside of the money created by Allah and Dajjal didn't like that no in order for Dajjal to rip us off he took the gold dinar and silver dirham out of the market and so when Pakistan was born on the very first day of its birth because those who brought Pakistan into being did not have the knowledge that they needed some of them still don't have it even up to now it was brought into being with this bogus piece of paper which is pretending to be money paper currency paper currency now tell me go and ask your mufti this question for me how can I take a piece of paper and get a printing press a printer anybody could buy a printer in the market now you call a printer they do excellent work and I print a picture on the piece of paper and put a number on it huh? and call it money currency and give to that piece of paper an entirely fictitious value huh? what is the value of a piece of paper the answer is the value of a piece of paper would be another piece of paper another piece of paper this will have the value of this huh? a piece of paper would have the value of another piece of paper but no they tell me that this piece of paper has the value of tetaric yeah, this piece of paper has the value of tetaric so I am stunned I'm shaken what kind of logic is that how could a piece of paper have the value of tetaric I don't know whether in France or in Germany they'll understand what we're talking about tetaric and then they tell me this other piece of paper has the value of roti chennai 
Tetarik, of course, is cup of tea that you drink, and roti chana is another, is a breakfast that you have here in Malaysia. Uh, and then another piece of paper has the value of a chicken. Huh? And then another piece of paper has the value of a donkey. <laughs> so I said to myself, they think I am a donkey? How could a piece of paper, just by changing the number on the piece of paper, and the value is constantly increasing, until they reach a donkey? And that's when I said, stop, I am not a donkey. Those who give the fatwa that this is halal, they know who they are. That's what they are. Who give the fatwa that this is halal, it's not. Only Allah can create wealth out of nothing. Only Allah can create wealth out of nothing. But Dajjal has done it by giving to the piece of paper an entirely fictitious value. He has created wealth out of nothing. I know that I'm shortcutting the subject and those who want a more serious study of the subject, I would need to take them to the Bretton Woods Conference in 1944 and explain to them what happened in Bretton Woods. And then I'll have to take them to the International Monetary Fund and its Articles of Agreement which prohibited the use of gold as money, incidentally. So it made haram what Allah made haram, halal. It made haram what Allah made haram, halal, and that is shirk. That is shirk. And then I'll have to take them to September 1971, when President Nixon removed the fig leaf. There was a fig leaf to hide the shame. And the fig leaf was that the United States has committed itself to redeem US dollars for gold at $35 an ounce, but only to governments. And that fig leaf was removed in September 1971. So now the shame is exposed. Since 1971, if you couldn't see before, now you should be able to see that this is totally haram. Totally haram. And those who create wealth out of nothing are playing God, they're committing shirk. Yes, I know you can say Imran Hussein has no right to use the word shirk. Well, wait until you reach in your grave. Why don't you just wait until you reach in your grave? Are you not aware of the hadith in Sahih Bukhari? Or is it too uncomfortable for you to quote that hadith? about Akhiru Zaman and this is Akhiru Zaman that 999 out of every 1000 will enter into Jahannam if you take a piece of paper and print, print a picture on it and put a number on it and then assign to this piece of paper a fictitious value You are attempting to create wealth out of nothing and that is shirk. Only Allah creates wealth out of nothing. The mastermind behind this is Dajjal. When Pakistan came into being in 1947, if the leaders were men of knowledge, they would have declared the territory to be Darul Islam. They would have said goodbye to Western European political system. This is ours, this is Islam. This is Darul Islam. And until such time as the universal Khilafah can be restored, we in Pakistan, we have our Amir. And enforce the Sharia in Pakistan. If they had done that, 
then they would have also on the very first day that Pakistan came into being they would have instituted dinar and dirham as money if they had done that the people of Pakistan would not today be in miserable poverty and destitution and suffering 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 because the rupee has been the instrument of their financial enslavement the jal is the mastermind while one part of the world is growing poorer and poorer and poorer those countries which follow the jal are growing richer and richer and richer if you go to manhattan and you carry pakistani rupees in your wallet whole packet you can't even buy a cup of coffee with it won't you think is it so difficult for you to think but if you take an American dollar to any little village in Pakistan or Bangladesh or India or Indonesia, you can buy whatever you want. When will Muslims begin to think? And so this paper money is the corruption of money and it has come to Dajjal and they have already used it to rip off mankind they all they need to do is to print the paper and they can buy all the oil all 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 from Saudi Arabia free of charge free of charge you just print the paper so long as the Saudis accept the paper but the horror story is worse than that In 1971, when the United States reneged on its obligation under international law to redeem US dollars for gold, they tore up Bretton Woods. They needed a substitute to keep the dollar high so that the United States could remain the ruling state in the world. Not France, not Germany, huh? United States. So they fooled King Faisal, Rahimahullah, Malik Faisal. They went to him in 1973 when the war took place and the Arabs imposed the oil embargo on the United States. And suddenly the price of oil is going up because the market is controlled by the Zionists. The Zionists decide when something needs to go up and the Zionists decide how much it, could, it must go up hmm? so when you buy a gold dinar today and when you buy a silver dirham today guess who determines the price you pay for it yeah and the Zionist market in London decides and when they want to bring down the price they bring it down <laughs> and when they want to take it up they take it up there's no such thing as a free market anymore so they went to Faisal Rahimahullah and they said let's make a deal since this October war the price of oil is going up you're getting more wealth you used to, selling, you used to be selling your oil for maybe two three dollars a barrel now look you're selling them for eight ten dollars a barrel hmm? more revenue is coming and we have a deal to make with you if you'd only agree to this condition that all the oil that you sell must be paid for in dollars no matter who buys you must pay for it in dollars that's all you must do and we will ensure your security of your state we'll underwrite it no one will be able to touch Saudi Arabia and then we will you see the price of oil going up and up and up and up and up and the Saudis fell for it and OPEC came into being and OPEC instituted this law that oil must be sold only for US dollars 
And so oil now became black gold. Black gold. And the US dollar came to be known as the help me somebody. Petrodollar. That's it, the petrodollar. Please look at my lecture entitled The River Euphrates and the Mountain of Gold, that hadith of the Prophet. And so since 1973, the US dollar has flown high thanks to Saudi Arabia. Because oil is the largest commodity traded in the world market. And so the demand for the dollar is permanent. And not only did the dollar become the petrodollar, it became more than that. It became the trading dollar. If a Malaysian wanted to buy sarong from Indonesia, batik, you got to pay for it in dollars. You have ringgit, they have rupiah, and Mr. Uncle Sam is so far away. <laughs> But if you want to buy from China, you got to pay in dollars. You want to send some money to Pakistan from Malaysia. You go to the bank. I want to send some money to Pakistan. Can I send it in ringgit? Bank said tabuli. Tabuli. You cannot send money to Pakistan in ringgit. Why? Because the Zionist says, no, that's it. You have to send the money to Pakistan in dollar. And if you want in pounds or Australian dollar or let me whisper it, Singapore dollar. All those who are working for Dajjal, their money is strong. It's called hard currency. Huh? And our money looks like soft currency. So there is a constant demand for their money. And so they're going richer and richer and richer and richer. And we're going poorer and poorer and poorer and poorer. And Allah says in the Quran, in Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim Allah will not will not will not intervene to change your condition no matter how dismal it becomes Allah will not intervene to change your condition until you take the initiative using Allah's guidance to change your own condition. But that's not all the story. As they decolonize, they not only corrupt the money that you use as money, but they do more than that. They create a banking system. Now when I tell you this one, if you have not had dinner as yet, don't eat dinner. Because your food will not digest. Please, don't eat. They create a banking system. And let me explain to you how the bank operates. The bank takes the fictitious paper money. It takes it from you as a borrower. And it pays you interest on your paper money. Whether you have a fixed deposit or you have a savings account or whatever it is, you're going to be getting interest from the bank on your paper money. Which of course is haram. But not in Singapore. In Singapore you take interest money and you build massage with it. That's Singapore. And then the bank lends your money on interest but a higher rate. So maybe the bank is paying you 6% for your money. But when someone else borrows from the bank, he borrows at 12%. So 
So between 6 and 12 the bank is making profit. You think that's the end of the story? Oh no! <laughs> oh no! You deposited 100 ringgits in the bank. That's all. How come the bank is lending 1,000? No? If you put in 100, the bank should be allowed to lend only 100. But they came up with a very strange name. I don't know where they got this name from, from Pera or Kalantan or Terengganu or Perlis or Joho. Fractional Reserve Banking. You know, sometimes they want to confuse you, so they create terminology to confuse you. It's called fractional. Fraction is something we studied in school in arithmetic. Fraction. Fractional Reserve Banking. Meaning that your government, which gives to the bank the permission and the authority to lend money on interest, and therefore your government has betrayed Allah and His Messenger, your government has allowed the bank to do more than that. Your government has allowed the bank to create out of thin air ten times more money than was created with the paper. The paper is 100. The invisible fractional reserve banking takes the 100 and make it 1000. And they're lending 1000 with 100 in, 1000 out. And now with the important question is who is benefiting from this? I don't want to know who owns the banks. No. I want to know who controls the banking system around the world. And when I ask that question, I find out very quickly. The Zionists. They control the banking system around the world. And so if Pakistani, if the leaders of Pakistan who brought Pakistan into being, if they had five ringgits worth of knowledge of Islam, that's all. That's all. Not only would they have declared Pakistan to be Darul Islam and ensure that the Islamic political system is established in Pakistan, not only would they have instituted dinar and dirham from day one as money in, Islam, in Pakistan, not the rupee, but they would not have allowed the banking system to have emerged in Pakistan with this bogus and fraudulent creation of the wealth out of thin air and also lending money on interest and borrowing money on interest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved this as the last revelation in the Quran, the last one. On the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu and recorded in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari, the last revelation that came down in the Quran was a revelation in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared in Surah Al-Baqarah 279 to 80 to 81. If you do not give up riba, فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Then take notice of a declaration of war from Allah and His Messenger. So Allah and his messenger have been war, making war against you Pakistan, against you Bangladesh, from day one. Now you're going to raise your hands and pray to Allah to beg him to save you when you betrayed him all these years. What we have done tonight and what we did last night 
and I pray that you may look at last night's lecture is to take you back in history and to show you how modern Western civilization did not emerge by accident. It emerged to play a role for Dajjal. It colonized the Muslim world and that was not by accident. And it never decolonized until it put political institutions in place to ensure that Khilafah and Darul Islam is buried. And the modern secular state takes its place. It never decolonized until it took dinar and dirham out of the market. And in its place it put its bogus and fraudulent paper currencies, which functions as an instrument of financial enslavement. It never decolonized until it put the banking system in place. So it can use the banking system to enslave you. Sometimes a bank lends money not because the bank wants to get rich. No. It lends you money so that it can enslave you. What should we do? What is the way ahead? And my answer is don't bother about the cattle. And they are cattle indeed who cannot understand and who go slavers, slavishly and go and vote in the elections and therefore validate that political system and take the Khilafah and Darul Islam and put it in the garbage bin. Don't bother about these people. No. You must refrain from participating in electoral politics if you want to save your soul because that's shirk. And in your heart, instead, you must be longing for the return of Khilafah and Darul Islam. These are good words I'm saying to you. Number two. In your heart, you must long for the return of Dinar and Dirham. In your heart. You must detest the paper money that we are using now. Or even me, I am using the paper money. But we detest it. And if we die, we want to die with that in our hearts. At least take that in the grave with us. We detest it. We want to get out of it. It's not enough for you to buy dinar. I believe we have a counter outside with dinar and dirham. To take a look at it. Hmm? It is not enough for you to buy dinar and dirham. But you must also start buying and selling with it. And the best way to buy and sell with it is to create a market. And in this market, only sunnah money will be allowed. No haram money in this market, only sunnah money, dinar and dirham. If you can do it in KLCC, go ahead and do it. <laughs> And when you succeed, please call me. I don't think it's possible. But I do believe it's possible in pa Kampung. Your yeah, Kampung. Kampung means the village, the remote countryside, for those of you in France and England. So go to the remote countryside, build a village. And in that village, you have a market. And in that market, you prohibit Dajjal's money. And in that market, you use only the money of the Quran and the Sunnah, Dinar and Dirham. <coughs> and with tears in your eyes, you say, Oh Allah, I'm doing this to bring back what was lost. Make it easy for us. Do not. Do not put your money in a fixed deposit at the bank. Do not, do not, do not borrow money on interest for any reason whatsoever. Don't do it. It's the road to slavery. And those who've already borrowed money on interest and you have bank loans and you're paying the mortgage, sell the house, sell the car, sell the business to get out of riba because that's a poison 
that will paralyze you. And finally, make dua to Allah that our ulama might wake up one day, inshallah, before it's too late. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samir alim wa tuba alayna ya mulana innaka anta tawab rahim bi rahmatika ya akham rahimin Ameen We have a little time for questions before we have A question pertaining to the necessity for pursuing Islamic spirituality in order to be able to penetrate the subject of Dajjal there is a hadith, I just read it recently uh, and I believe it is Sahih Bukhari in which the Prophet ﷺ prophesied about Akhir zaman He says, nobody, nobody, the Imams would not mention the name Dajjal on the member, would not speak about Dajjal on the member in the khutbah, no. He said so 1400 years ago. Hmm? We're living in an age today where nobody speaks about Dajjal on the member anymore. Why? Because it's a difficult subject, number one. Dajjal sees with one eye, the left eye. He blind in the right eye. It looks like a bulging grape. And I have interpreted this to the effect that it, the Jal has external sight and he's internally blind and those who follow the Jal are internally blind but when I give an opinion I don't want you to accept my opinion oh no I'll be disappointed when I give an opinion, I do not want you to accept it unless you are convinced that it is correct. Then I have a good student. <laughs> yes. Because if I make a mistake, my student will correct me. And so I say, the Jahad has external sight. He's internally blind. But Khidr alayhi salam gets knowledge both from outside and from inside Allah sends knowledge to him directly that knowledge will come into the heart which is the spirituality when there is noor in the heart noor noor is noor soul in the stock market huh? noor means light it's not soul in the stock market no Allah says Allah guides to his nur those whom Allah chooses Islamic spirituality in order for it to be achieved requires of us to begin the search with the recognition that truth must enter into the heart before light can enter into the heart and truth will enter into the heart only when we accept it rationally and then we stand up for it oh I can't do that Sheikh if I stand up for it I won't be able to travel they're gonna put me on a no-fly list Sheikh if I stand up for truth I won't get a U.S. visa anymore, Sheikh. If I stand up for truth, my business is going to collapse. Huh? Do you expect to get light that way? No. Not at all. You must live for Allah. You must be prepared to die for Allah. Kulina salati wa nusuki everything must be for Allah it doesn't matter if my business is going to suffer I am going to stand up for the truth it doesn't matter if they call me a terrorist and my friends now don't want to even get a telephone call from me 
terrorist. It doesn't matter. I am going to stand up for the truth. When Allah sees you like that, standing up for the truth that you've accepted, regardless of the price that you may pay, now you qualify to get nur in your heart. You gotta burn some oil to get that nur. Hmm? And when you get that nur, then you'll be able to see and to be able to penetrate the jal. Can you explain to us the situation in Syria? In Surah Al-Ma'idah of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a command. O oh, you who have faith, do not take the Jews and do not take the Christians as your friends and allies. And of course Allah is not speaking about all Jews and of all Christians. Who is he talking about? Ba'aduhum awliya uba. Do not take such Jews and do not take such Christians as your friends and allies who themselves are friends and allies of each other. Jews and Christians were never friends and allies of each other. So the Quran is anticipating something to come. It has already come. Western Christianity, not Eastern, brought into being that Jewish Christian alliance that Allah speaks of in the Quran. It's the Zionist Alliance, the Anglo-American Zionist Alliance, which has NATO as its military arm. Do not take them as your friends and allies. Whosoever turns to them with friendship and alliance now belong to them. You've lost your Islam. That's what happened in Libya. I am not a supporter of any government in the Muslim world. None. So don't come with this nonsense that I am a supporter of the Libyan government or I am a supporter of the Syrian government. That's nonsense. You should be ashamed of that. I'm not a supporter of any of these governments. I long for Khilafah. I long for Darul Islam. When will you understand that? But the Libyan government was opposing Zionism. And they didn't like that. And they got these so-called Mujahideen, who are not Mujahideen, they're fools, with a capital F. And they entered into an alliance with NATO to bring down Gaddafi and his government. And in the process, transform Libya into a, into a Zionist state. And they've lost their Islam. They've lost the Islam. And now they're trying to do the same thing in Syria. I am not a supporter of the Syrian government. No. But the Syrian government, like the Libyan government, is standing up to the Zionists. And whoever stands up to the Zionists, I applaud you. Yes. And if I can make an alliance with you, I will do it. In order to oppose the Zionists. The Syrian government was doing what the Libyan government was doing. And one, the, one of the most important reason why they want to bring down the Syrian government is to replace it. With a government like the one in Libya and the one in Afghanistan. So Syria will become another Zionist state. But there's another reason why they want to bring down the Syrian government. And that is because Syria has close ties with Russia. Russia has a naval base in Syria. It's the only naval base that the Russian Navy has in the whole Mediterranean. And Israel knows that Russia is a threat. The most important threat that Israel faces is from Putin. And so they want to deny Russia a naval base. So instead of it being a Russian base, it will become a NATO base. And they want to break up Pakistan, so Balochistan will have a NATO base in Balochistan. 
the mujahideen who say that they're mujahideen and who are in alliance with NATO which means with Saudi Arabia the Zionist state of Saudi Arabia the Zionist state of Qatar the Zionist who are in charge of the Turkish armed forces eh? these so-called mujahideen are not mujahideen they are terrorists and somebody has to say they are terrorists and I call them terrorists but these words of mine are not meant not meant to include those who are not in alliance with the Zionists not in alliance with Saudi Arabia taking any help from Saudi Arabia and Qatar and uh, Turkey I don't know what's going to happen in Syria but I fear the worst that they're going to launch a vicious war within the next few months and it's going to cause uh, the big war that the Prophet spoke of the Malhama that one war will lead to another until you have the biggest of all wars which will make first world war and second world war look like popcorn give us a name of a village in which dinar and dirham is now being used Malaysia is a very significant country it's the only place apart from France where a leader emerged Dr. Mahathir who denounced the monetary system uh, Dr. Mahathir is not an alim I don't think he is an alim is he? no he's not a scholar of Quran and Hadith is he? come on what's, what's wrong why can't you speak? what's wrong? a man who is not an alim not a scholar of the Quran not a scholar of the Hadith a politician and this is a man who has to stand up and declare that his monetary system is bogus and fraudulent and this is a man who asks, has to ask for dinar and dirham to come back at least in government to government trade where are the ulama? where? only after he spoke did Kalantan wake up from its sleep 15, 20 years now we are lecturing Umar Fadili and myself Kalantan never listened to us never listened to us never listened to us but when Dr. Mahathir stood up and spoke what should have been spoken by the ulama then they woke up and now they're minting dinar and dirham but dinar and dirham are not being used in the market as money central bank, central bank or bank nigara say this is um, Bata <laughs> so we can allow it as Bata hmm? what we are saying is no let us do it in a village and create a market and in our market we will prohibit 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 the haram money prohibit 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 the haram money and use only the halal money dinar and dirham what's wrong with that I don't know of any village where it is being done now I don't know but my students have bought land already in the north and I hope inshallah by the end of this year declaring the land there's no access road as yet and uh, they're going to start planting food crops I don't think it'll be durian <laughs> and put some animals on the land and then the kampung houses are going to start being built I hope to build a kampung house myself and, uh, and inshallah uh, live in the village and then with Allah's help with Allah's help with Allah's help we'll try to establish that market in which we'll use dirhams mostly dirhams very rare would you have to use a dinar and I hope that this will be your in your heart now put in your heart but before you die before the angel comes to take you away you also want to do something to bring back that money which the Jal took away from us inshallah 
how accurate is the exchange between salt and salt between dates and dates to, to the extent that we have the capacity to measure we we'll use that measurement and once we use that measurement we'll try to ensure it's an equal exchange if we miss by a one thousand of a gram I don't think you'll go to Jahannam for that the p question pertains to the exchange of dates for dates but the exchange for dates or dates is only based on weight or what do you do about the quality of the dates the quality differs Nabi Muhammad already answered your question he said take these dates and sell it and take that money and buy these dates so that the question of quality comes into being okay what he has prohibited is a direct exchange which is unequal and the reason why he has done that is to prohibit the money lender from getting an opening to lend money on interest elections are coming up in Malaysia elections are coming up in Malaysia who should we vote for <laughs> If ever you come across a politician who says, I want to bring back Khilafah and I want to bring back Darul Islam and of course Darul Islam means once you are a Muslim you don't need a visa to enter La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah and you could enter that territory if it is Darul Islam you don't need a work permit to work in that territory if it is Darul Islam you don't need a PR it's called yeah. PR yeah. no you can reside in that territory if it is Darul Islam you do not need Malaysian citizenship to participate in the political process on the basis of political equality with all other Muslims what a beautiful religion we have in Islam if you ever find a politician who bows down and worship Allah and who says I want to restore Darul Islam I want to restore Khilafah I want to bring back gold and silver, dinar and dirham as money and I want to get rid of that monstrous evil, the banking system out of here <laughs> then I would suggest that's a very good man to stay close to but I tell you one thing about him he would never say vote for me because he would never be so foolish as to believe that you can go through the root of shirk to bring Islam when I told that to pass they were very angry with me and they're still angry with me up to now and when I tell that to Ikhwan in Egypt and the Salafis in Egypt they're very angry with me but this is the truth you don't go on the path of shirk to bring Islam that's not the Sunnah can we use a democratic system to restore the Khilafah it's not a democratic system it's a Zionist system <laughs> <laughs> in which money decides how the votes go money yeah. someone seems to be annoyed about my negative comments about Pakistan and the Pakistani rupee so let me remind you that the poor people of Pakistan paid for my education the poor people of Pakistan educated Imran 
This is Pakistani scholarship before you today. I went to Pakistan in 1964 and remained as a student until 1971, studying at the Alimi Institute of Islamic Studies. Sometimes with five rupees in your pocket, you go to travel by bus, and you put one foot on the running board and one foot, one hand holding on to this, and that's how you're traveling. Huh? And you pay not one rupee, less than that, it's called chawanni and atanni, four, four um, ani, anas, for the bus fare. That's how we lived as students. But I got my education in Pakistan, and I'll never forget that. No. And so I'm not a person who dislikes Pakistan. No, and you see what lies ahead now in the future. Just wait and see, I'm not going to talk. But you should not be annoyed for me to be lambasting that which is evil. No, you should be proud of me for taking on that which is evil and that which is enslaving the Pakistani people. The Pakistani rupee has been an instrument of enslavement of the Pakistani people. Okay? And I am talking, my heart is with the poor. The mass is out there. Not with those who are driving their limousines on the streets of Pakistan. The mass is out there who are living on 8,000 rupees a month. And 6,000 rupees a month, eh? they have to live on that. I love Pakistan. I love Pakistan. I can't get a lassi drink in Malaysia. I get in Pakistan. I can't get naan in Malaysia that I get in Pakistan. I long to go back to Pakistan. But what has to be spoken has to be spoken. Somebody has to say it. And these comments of mine are not wrong. I'm speaking the truth, as bitter as it may be. But these are not meant to vilify people. No, I'm proud of my stay in Pakistan and I'm grateful to the people of Pakistan who paid for my education, yes. There are some shops which are already transacting dinar and dirham in the Klang Valley. In Singapore as well. There are some shops accepting dinar and dirham. It's a positive sign that we are minting dinar and dirham. It's a positive sign. Maybe Dr. Mahathir will be blessed by Allah for that, for standing up for dinar and dirham, when nobody else did. It's a good thing that people are now using dinar and dirham for buying and selling in some shops, okay? But the Prophet said alayhi salatu wa sallam, man ra'a munkaran fal yugayir hu biyadi. We are not concerned about the dinar and dirham as much as we are concerned about the haram money. When you see something which is munkar, change it with your hand. So it is not necessary to bring back dinar and dirham in a few shops. It is necessary to create a market which will prohibit the entry of the bogus, fraudulent, haram paper money and worse than that, the electronic money that is coming. Worse than that, because that electronic money is a financial Guantanamo. Hmm? That is what we are asking you for. To build a market. Build a market. My students in Pakistan, mashallah, are now looking to buy land. I won't tell you where. And as soon as they get the land, and there are Pakistanis in different parts of the world, I hope I don't speak too much, who are supporting the effort to buy the land and to put up the village. And so soon we're going to have a market in Pakistan, inshallah. And we'll have a market here in, Kea, in, in Malaysia. And we'll have a market in Tunisia and we'll have a market in Cape Town which is used only dinar and dirham, only dinar and dirham, and will not allow the bogus paper money, inshallah.
what is the possibility of our restoring Darul Islam? Oh, but I told you, you don't have long to wait again. No, this modern Republican state is going into the garbage bin from where it came out in the first place. And Darul Islam is coming back with Imam al Mahdi. Imam al Mahdi will emerge, in my opinion, Allah will cause him to emerge at that time when the Jal is about to declare, I am the Messiah, or has declared, I am the Messiah. By my calculation, and I can be wrong, that should be in about 20 or 25 years from now. Who is Imran Hussein to know the future? Only Allah knows the future. Why does he predict? I'll tell you why. Because it's foolish to believe that Imam al-Mahdi is 2,000 years away from now. That's why I'm saying it. Or Imam al-Mahdi is 500 years away from now. That's why I'm saying it. He's around the corner. He's around the corner. And I come to that conclusion because of Jerusalem in the Quran. Read Jerusalem in the Quran. Read the analysis conducted in that book and you'll be able to anticipate what is coming. We now have, we have reached to that stage where the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, give me another one minute, that's all. Hadith is in Sahih Bukhari, I quoted it last night, I quoted it the night before. He said the Umran, Umran of Baytul Maqdis, meaning Jerusalem, at center stage in the world, would come at that time of the Kharab of Yathrib, when Medina is in a state of desolation. Jerusalem is in center stage today. That's where the Zionists have taken it. And Medina is in a state of desolation today. That's where the Saudis have put it. At this time, he says, you're going to have the Malhama, the Great War, that will make the First War and the Second World War look like popcorn. Most of mankind will not survive. Most of mankind will not survive. Very few will be alive. But they don't teach this at Harvard and Cambridge and Yale and Oxford and the Sorbonne and... No, no, no. This is not taught at universities. But this is coming. Part of the weapon that is going to be used is biological warfare. Plague. But also nuclear warfare. When the two titans clash, the American-led alliance and the Russian-led alliance. And so the Malhama. And then he says the time of the Malhama, the khuruj of the Malhama, will be the time of Fatul Constantinia. That when the big wars start, and the big wars are going to start soon when Israel comes out, within the next few months, when Israel begins the, the fighting. It will be followed by the Fathul Constantinia, meaning Constantinople will be conquered. So clearly, clearly, the conquest of Constantinople 600 years ago by an Ottoman Sultan who shamelessly took the cathedral which is the grandest cathedral of the Christian world, Hagia Sophia, which has functioned as the grandest cathedral for 1,000 years of the Christian world, Hagia Sophia. And as he entered the city when he conquered it, the first thing he did was to shamelessly transform that cathedral into a masjid. Huh? Did you hear that? When Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu got the, the condition from the Patriarch of Jerusalem. I am not going to hand over the city except to the Khalifa when the Muslims conquered Jerusalem. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu had to travel from Medina to Jerusalem. Every Muslim knows that. And he and a servant went with one camel. Sometimes the servant will ride the camel and Umar will walk. Huh? 
and uh, when they reached to Jerusalem the patriarch the, this story is in this book huh? you get it in this book the patriarch took Umar radiallahu ta'ala around Jerusalem to show him the places and while they were in the church of the resurrection the time of Salat came every Muslim knows it that the patriarch invited Umar radiallahu ta'ala to perform his Salat in the church Umar radiallahu ta'ala who declined he said no if I were to perform my Salat in this church tomorrow might if somebody would come to take this church and make it a masjid that was Umar and this is Sultan Fatih he shamelessly transformed that cathedral into a masjid and it remained a masjid for 500 years until Mustafa Kamal came and added insult to injury and took a church which became a masjid and made it a museum yeah I mean to say you have to be really a godless person to do that a church for 1000 years a church and then for 500 years a masjid and then you will transform it to, into a museum my gosh so the Prophet والسلام, was not sp speaking about Sultan Fatih and the conquest of Jerusalem in 1455 or 56 no the conquest of Jerusalem in the Hadith is a conquest that is coming in the future not in the past please read this booklet and then he said the conquest of Jerusalem sorry the conquest of Constantinople would be the time of the Khuruj of Dajjal Khuruj of Dajjal so by my calculation it's a guess we probably have only about 20-25 years left before Imam al-Mahdi will emerge and when Imam al-Mahdi comes Khilafah is restored goodbye Saudi Arabia goodbye Khilafah is restored and Darul Islam is restored and you and your political system and your parties and your elections could go where you know it's supposed to go Thank you very much. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiul alim wa tawa alina ya mulana innaka anta tawa abrahim. Birahmatika ya ahmar rahimin. Amin. Ampunan kepadaku, ampunkanlah dosaku Sesungguhnya engkau lah pengampun dosa-dosa besar Tuhanku, aku tidak layak untuk syurgamu Tetapi aku tidak pula sanggup 
Dari itu kurniakanlah Ampunan kepadaku Ampunkanlah dosaku Sesungguhnya Engkau lah pengampun Dosa-dosa besar